Well, thanks a lot for this sweet introduction. Um, so today, I'll be talking about progressive web apps, but also about uh, one app that we're developing called Mayday. So uh, Mayday is a tool to um, manage unequal housework in, uh, in our life. So a little bit uh, about me. So my name is Sarah, and I'm a tech lead front-end web developer at Dassault System. So Dassault System is a French multinational company uh, who develops software uh, 3D design uh, uh, and PLM, so PLM, it's uh, product lifecycle management software. And I'm also a full stack developer for Mayday and actually the co-founder of it. Uh, but that's not all. Uh, actually, I'm uh, one of Dish's France leaders and also Dassault System advocates for El Bouge. So El Bouge, it's in French and in English, it means girls on the move. So uh, the, the aim of these two communities is to uh, give more visibility to women in tech and create technical uh, vocation among young girls. So Mayday, what's this exactly? So actually it all started in a hackathon. Uh, it's a French hackathon that was organized in the beginning of this year. And the objective was to find um, efficient solutions to achieve progress in, on gender equality. So I went there as a front-end development mentor. And there I met an awesome person called Julie. So Julie is not a front-end developer or a developer uh, anyway. Uh, she's just came to this hackathon with a great idea. And the idea actually uh, arose from her personal experience. Here I'm quoting uh, her words. So actually she's like, uh, was struggling with uh, the way with finding a way to find um, a balance between her career and her personal life. And also she had, like uh, made in this general observation that we also do, is that women still do a majority of housework and child work. So some women actually are like putting their career on hold just because their partner are not helping out, which is a shame actually. So we worked together with other uh, team members and we thought about this application. So Mayday is a tool that will allow couples to measure how equal or unequal their division of housework and help them to better share the load. So the idea here is that they will track their, act their daily activities, they will have um, a daily report of what they're doing, and the point here is like they will be comparing their bot reports. And it turns out, actually, the, we, we did a pitch bit, uh, in front of the minister, and we won a, an award for that. So here's a picture of us, and in the middle, there's um, the former minister, actually. And the tallest girl there is, is me, in case you can tell. <laughs> actually, it makes me wonder that I, I, I've always been the tallest girl, actually, even if my, in my uh, earliest childhood. Um, so, May the Adventures continues and some uh, members uh, left, but me and Julie were still here and some other members joined us, actually. So, we continued the development and we decided uh, to have a full stack JavaScript solution and also decided that Mayday will be a progressive web app. So, here, here is uh, just a small overview of our stack and um, the, um, the platform that you're using, uh, backend side, and uh, the platform used uh, pro uh, front-end side. So why do we choose, did we, did we, do we choose to build uh, a progressive web app? So actually, uh, let me start by uh, stating that uh, there's a huge number, five billion of devices that are connected to the web. Actually, I think that is um, incredible. T just think about the, 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 um, the amount of content that we have. And also, it's like a, a big challenge for developers. And since that, I'm actually the only developer for, uh, for Mayday. So um, I don't have the skills, for example, to like uh, develop an app for iOS or Android. So uh, doing it with JavaScript was like an easy answer for me also. So thinking about this huge content, I also think that um, there is this uh, statistic here that actually uh, users tend to use native apps 87% uh, of their time versus just 13% uh, for uh, mobile webs. Well, actually, when you see that, you're like uh, thinking, why? I'm 
Am I actually uh, building a, 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 um, a web app instead of a native app? Well, actually, there is a flip side to this, though, about the app's usage. So actually, 80% of the time spent is only on the three top apps. So what are the odds, actually, that my newly created app will be actually in these apps? So um, if we talk about capability here, uh, so definitely uh, uh, native apps have like this high capability since that they work offline. They have this um, this feature of uh, being uh, re-engaging, and um, they also work offline. Uh, and in the other side, websites is not the case. But actually, uh, in terms of reach, in our websites, uh, in our uh, daily basis, actually, we uh, we like use hundreds of websites. So let's think about. Um, Adding this ability, like to work offline or be uh, loaded instantly, and like adding this a uh, website to our phone. So I this is um, what a progressive web app is. Actually, it's bridging these capabilities, uh, capabilities of native apps, and the reach of the web. So it's like bringing the best of two the two worlds. So if like, I'm, um, I use Alex Russell words, so progressive web apps are just websites that took all the right vitamins. And actually, uh, Alex Russell, so he's a Googler. He's uh, the one who came, uh, came up with this concept with progressive web apps, but with Frances Brenman. I, I don't think that we actually uh, talk about her a lot. So these vitamins actually um, are, for example, uh, Web App Manifest, so we will talk about it. Server Worker, uh, Service Worker, we will talk about it a lot. And when it comes to browser support, well, actually, um, you may think that Progressive Web Apps, it's a Google thing, but actually, the answer is no, since that um, it's a common initiative uh, between some other browsers also. So Mozilla, Microsoft, Samsung, and Opera, they are all on board for the Progressive Web Apps technology. And actually, there is a website called What Web Can Do uh, dot today, where we can uh, see all the features that are natively supported by your, your your browser. So here we don't see Apple. Well, actually, Apple uh, just one month before, I think here uh, they are like there's this rumor that they uh, started implementing Server Worker, but actually they, they didn't announce it officially. And same goes for Microsoft. So actually, they are like uh, already developed. Oh, sorry, they are already developed service workers, and it's behind the flag. Oh, whoa, I missed something. Yeah. And for the manifest, so here also for Apple. So uh, they also announced that it just was last month that they are implementing the web app, uh, web app manifest. So actually here, you may think that, well, all the technologies are not supported yet, but the word progressive in progressive web apps, actually, it's not there by accident. So it's all about user experience. So uh, even if all the technologies are not supported yet, we just like take the best of the browser that we, we, that we are using. So we just talked l now um, why I make this choice of progressive web apps. So now let's talk about what is a progressive web app. So also Alex Russell, when he announced uh, progressive web apps, he announced also some characteristics. So progressive web app is responsive, connectivity independent, app-like, fresh, safe, discoverable, and re-engageable, and installable like, like an app. So when it comes to responsiveness, actually responsive, uh, it means that it adapts to the browser size. So for that, you may use a flexbox layout or grid layout, for example, think about fluid units, etc. And uh, progressive web app is app-like. So it means that uh, when you're developing your app, you need to think about uh, splitting your app into an app shell and a dynamic content. So the architecture that we are using is a single page app. So the app shell is the, the minimal JavaScript and uh, HTML that is used for the constant uh, components, like the, um, the, um, the toolbar and to top or the footer, for example. Uh, progressive Web App is the connectivity independent, so it loads instantly, regardless of the network state. 
especially if it's intermittent. Actually, it's the worst uh, scenario case, since that we are like just there waiting forever for uh, the website to load. So the tech behind this is the server worker. So a server worker is a client-side proxy that lets you control how network work requests from your page are handled. So it uses fetch and cache API, cache API. So here the cache is not um, the browser cache, is that the browser cache actually is not working offline. It's a special cache, uh, cache for, uh, for the service worker. And here for to, to use it, you need to register it. So for example, in your index.html, you need to register your uh, server's worker. And once it's registered, so then um, you need to listen also to the install event. Uh, so when your uh, service worker is installed, then you can open uh, your cache. So using the cache API and add all the, 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 the files that you need. For example, uh, the app shell, if you want. Um, so service workers like this proxy that intercepts uh, requests. So it makes sense that you will be listening to the fetch event. And when is the case, so you're, uh, you're just Look into the, your cache, and when if there is a match, so then uh, you will return the response. If it's not, you will fetch. So actually, here it's also depending on the the the, the, the strategy that you want. So here it's like a, an offline a first strategy, but if you ha you want to have like a um, up to date content, so you need to go to the network first and then look into the cache. Sorry. Um, progressive web app is also fresh, so uh, the app shell and data always uh, need to be updated. So here we need to listen to the event called activate. So when there is uh, open windows um, that are controlled by the service worker, so the service worker, the new one, is like in the waiting state, and um, when it activates, so at this time actually you can delete the old cache and use to store uh, another one. Um, progressive web app is also safe, so it's mandatory that uh, progressive web app is uh, will be served only over HTTPS, and actually it also works on localhost, which is uh, handy since that's uh, in development mo mode, so we are in uh, using localhost, and there is a, a good reason behind that actually. So since that a service worker is a proxy, so you don't uh, you don't want to have like a man the in man in the middle attacks uh, for your app. Uh, progressive web app is um, is indexed by search engine, so that's a great um, that's a great feature. Uh, in terms like uh, in the opposite, native apps don't have this uh, this this feature since that you ha you need to go to the store to to find it. And progressive web app is installable, so you are like it's installable like a native app. So here, like you see uh, one icon on 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 the on your mobile, and when it launched, we have this uh, splash screen even without without the, the browser area. So to do that, we need to uh, a web app manifest. So web app manifest is just a file that contains all uh, the data that will identify your app. So it contains, for example, the name of your app the icon of it that will uh, show on your mobile, the splash screen, so the team color of it, and the start URL to launch uh, your app. So to add this file, uh, nothing more simpler than adding this, uh, this link into your index.html, for example. Uh, progressive ab web app is re-engageable. So uh, we are using, like here, push notification. So it's uh, the combination of the notification API and the push API. So for example, if uh, for Safari, for example, um, uh, so since that service worker is not implemented yet, so unfortunately, you will not uh, be able to use push notifications. So the idea here is that uh, first, it's really mandatory to ask the user for permission. So if he's OK with it, uh, you get a push subscription from, from the browser, so you will get a key. And then you will send this key to the, serve, uh, to the server to be stored. Because afterwards, actually, when the push server will send push messages to the subs uh, subscription endpoint, so he will know, uh, he will know your, um, your, uh, your uh, laptop, actually. And in the other hand, the server worker uh, will listen to the push events and then show the notif notifications. It's uh, just simple like this. So here we are using the show notification function. So here I'm, I'm just um, uh, showing a hello world, but uh, in this function we can give it a more um, a more complete object. For example, like for adding uh, 
uh, buttons and stuff like that in the notification button. So how to build a progressive web app efficiently? So when we started, actually, we found out that there is like a lot of frameworks and libraries that um, adopted the progressive web apps. So we can find React, Preact, uh, Polymer, and Vue. And for our uh, application, actually, we used um, Polymer. So Polymer is not a framework. It's uh, a library that sugars web components, APIs. Um, so actually, I choose it because, uh, first of all, I'm a big fan of web components. And when I'm not uh, talking about progressive web apps, uh, actually, I'm talking about web components uh, because I think that they are future. They are like uh, enabl enabling us to like uh, um, have this uh, clear architecture of our, uh, our app. So for example, in this view here, I'm using the, the all the apps that are uh, in the webcomponents.org. So that most of them are uh, built using uh, Polymer 1 or 2. So for example, for the app toolbar, when I'm using this, this component here, I'm just changing its style. Uh, whoa. Sorry for that. No, it wants. OK. So in the bottom here, uh, we're like, uh, I'm using the iron selector to switch between views. And of course, when we're switching between views, so I need the iron pages here to do a data binding between uh, the view that, I'm wanting, uh, that I want and also with uh, the URL. And here, for example, a paper fab uh, button to allow us, for example, in this case, to um, so it's a floating button uh, that allowing us to add and customize the view of uh, our activities. And besides web components, actually Polymer loves also progressive web apps, since that um, Polymer is giving us uh, this, uh, this, this CLI that will enable us to generate a new progressive web app from scratch. And it's a great way to like, start uh, a web app from, uh, from scratch like this. So you only need to install the Polymer CLI, choose your starter kit. So for example, you can create uh, a folder for a new app, do a Polymer in it. And it's given you actually three options. So uh, I choose the Polymer 2 starter kit. Actually, it's, um, I think that's the best one for like if you use uh, the purple pattern and etc. So we will um, show it later. And afterwards, you can build your application and and then serve it. So when you open it, actually you can find this web application. So this web application you will uh, it's all it's already containing the router and um, the material design style. So actually, I I I, um, I started really from from this one. I just change the layout and change the CSS of it. So uh, besides generating this scaffolding of the app, it's also generating a manifest directly and also a service worker. And there is one great feature about the Polymer CLI is that when you do the build, it's giving you three distributions. So yes, five bundles. So it's the one that is actually uh, the standard uh, distribution that is working for almost all the browsers. And yes, yeah, six bundles. So uh, here, it's like more performant and more efficient uh, for the browser that are already um, supporting this. And yes, yeah, six unbundled. So here, it's like for the browser that are supporting HTTP2 and push. Another great feature is the purple pattern. So the idea here of the purple pattern is that uh, first, you only need to push the code needed for the initial route. So here, uh, you mandatory need your app shell architecture. And uh, afterwards, we will render and make the initial route active. So in the, in this, in the, um, in the meantime, when the user is enjoying this, uh, this active router, actually, you can pre-cache the necessary files for the remani remaining uh, routes. And here, uh, the, the service worker is used for that. And afterwards, when the user is ready to, uh, to move on to other uh, routes, so the uh, remaining routes actually are lazy loaded from, from the cache, which enables us actually to have like this instant loading of routes. So how to evaluate a progressive web app? How to make sure that we are on the right track and the progressive web app is like the best one? So we can use um, Lighthouse. Actually, there's also a, a, another tool called uh, Web Page Test, um, but it's more like uh, about 
performance, but the lighthouse, lighthouse actually, I think it's more uh, complete. So you have a score about the progressive web app, so it means that if you are like using the manifest, scalable worker, etc., uh, the performance accessibility uh, is like if you want to broaden your, your, your public, so it will be a great idea to uh, test this too. And also the best uh, practices, like the best practices that the community uh, came out with. So here, this is the real report of uh, our MEDI app, where we are actually like, uh, pretty proud of it. And to learn more about a progressive web app, so I think that nothing better than the developers.google.com. Actually, there, there are docs that are um, up to date uh, always. And to learn more about the service workers, so uh, it's mandatory, I think. Yeah, you should to, uh, take a look at the Jake Archibald uh, websites. It's actually uh, talking about all the, uh, the offline strategies and the cash strategy that we want. And if I'm not, not happy at all with uh, the, the CLIs that, we, that frameworks can, can, can uh, give us, there is a progressive web app builder. So here you can generate by yourself the manifest, the service worker, etc. And there is one website that was, uh, it's a project uh, led by Adi Osmani, I think. Uh, so this uh, website, you can find uh, several applications that are built uh, using several frameworks. So, and it will give you all the, the metrics about each framework. So it's a great way to like, do uh, this uh, comparison between, uh, between frameworks and see the metrics of each one. Uh, so, um, what about Mayday? So Mayday started for now. Actually, we are now uh, planning like for uh, announcing a public beta release for January 2008. We are like uh, pretty happy about it. So stay tuned to test uh, the app. Oh, sorry, I think my. It's not working that well. And also, so like I said, I'm the only uh, developer for, uh, in, for Mayday, so we're looking for volunteers, especially uh, designers and uh, developers. So you're interested in using Polymer, so why not uh, try it with us? And that's it for me, actually. Thanks for listening. <laughs>